Welcome to the Beauty Business Strategies Podcast, where we give salon, spa, and med spa owners quick tips to make more money, inspire your team, and create world-class client experiences. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the Beauty Business Strategies Podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Yost, and today I am joined by Alicia Bonner, a great guest, and you are going to love her story. Alicia, how are you? Hi, I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, my pleasure. My pleasure. So I, um, you know, I'm really interested for you guys to hear uh, and have this conversation with Alicia because there's a, just a great story uh, in her story. Uh, and and the journey of of her business and uh, and what she's about and and again something I think is extremely relatable to all of us uh, that are in business or thinking about this idea of you know possibly getting into business or whatever role you're in. There's absolutely going to be something there for you today. Uh, but before we go any further, it's always great to get an introduction because some of you may be like, I'm not sure who Alicia Bonner is. So with that in mind. Mind, Alicia, why don't you give yourself just a, a quick introduction uh, before we dive in? Sure. My name is Alicia Bonner, and I am a physician assistant and a small med spot owner in Yardley, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, as we were preparing, I asked Alicia to keep her intro short uh, for this reason, because part of this story goes into exploring uh, where Alicia started and where she is now. And I didn't want uh, that all immediately revealed in the, in the intro. Uh, so let's dive into that. Let's dive into where this kind of, where your journey started. And so, you know, before you got into business for yourself and started kind of into business for yourself, because again, I'm giving away a little bit, uh, but just for context, uh, Alicia kind of started out a little bit what, what I'll describe right now, and it'll, it'll become clear a little bit kind of part time uh, in another area and then kind of eventually transitioned. But give us an idea of where, what your career journey uh, looked like before uh, you started Bella Mobile? So um, I worked as a full-time physician assistant um, in an area of medicine called physical medicine and rehabilitation. So um, it's doing a lot of pain management and physical rehab. And so I had a uh, Monday to Friday, you know, seven to three 30 or four, um, job. <clears throat> Part of that job um, entails injecting neurotoxins like Botox and such for chronic pain conditions. So I was injecting large amounts of Botox for migraines, stroke patients, contractures. Um, and so for my own curiosity, I was maybe 26 or 27 at the time. I'm like, well, how do I do this for like forehead wrinkles, you know, like I want to, I want to learn the beauty side of this product. And so as, um, courtesy, they would send trainers in to train me for the aesthetic side just for fun. Um, and so I started doing that on just friends and family because they're training me. So then I wanted to practice how to do it. So this was around 2009, maybe a little earlier, 2008, 2009. Um, and then it became, oh, well, can you do a friend of a friend and then friends of friends of friends? And so then I started doing uh, po uh, pop-up Botox parties and filler parties. And that's how I became Bella meaning beauty and then mobile and aesthetics. Um, and so I worked my full-time job and just did this part-time beauty thing, honestly, as like a social thing. Um, my mom was always going to Tupperware parties and tastefully simply parties and, uh, you know, and so it was reminiscent of those types of things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I would show up and actually I would do a lot of like other doctor's offices and hair salons and, um, just do these pop-up events and they were super fun and it subsidized a little bit of my income with my, um, graduate school tuition. I was, you know, looking for a little side gig and this was perfect kind of create my own hours. So that's awesome. how I started. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, again, who doesn't love a good pop-up Botox filler party? I mean, come on. 
Uh, you know, I mean, who listen, that's a cool thing. So I love this idea that, you know, what started as, and again, it just goes to show, as we've said for years and years, and it's never going to change, word of mouth is still every business's best friend. Uh, but that's not what this conversation is about. But I mean, it's already pointed out that it's like what started as I just started to do some friends and family just to practice and utilize a skill that I have, but in a different way, because as you shared, you were doing more of the injectables and using the same product, but more for medical treatment purposes instead of beauty treatment purposes. Uh, but now it's like, hey, listen, the door opened, uh, expand my horizons a little bit. Uh, you know what? Next thing you know, friends are telling friends. I love that. And so this became this, like I said, this idea of that that mobile, you know, I'm going to move around uh, and, and be, you know, liquid like that and, and go where go where opportunities lie for me. So how long did that? So what was how long was that journey? I mean, what, how, when you said, you, um, I think it's, you referenced the idea of kind of start doing that like 2009. Yes. Um, and then I got busier and busier and people wanted to be able to find me at a brick and mortar location occasionally, like if they needed a touch up or if I wasn't having an event and they had an event to go to and they wanted services. So in, uh, 2015, I, found a medical director who had a location um, and he also did aesthetics part-time. And so uh, we decided to unite and come together. And so then I was still working my full-time job and, but I would sort of utilize the brick and mortar location for patients to find me when they needed appointments. And I had some, you know, set hours, but also I did still do mobile events. Cool. Cool. So we were, you know, like I said, roughly then about that six years in became something that says, all right, we got a little bit more of kind of a home base uh, to kind of start to work out of. Um, you know, one thing that is is interesting is obviously there probably had to reach a point somewhere in this journey where we probably had to start to make some decisions around, OK, you know, I've got still, because th during this whole time, if I'm not mistaken, right, during this whole time, we're still working our regular job. We still have our regular job going on yes. uh, at that point. But what became uh, about what year or what part of this journey did this, there had to be a tipping point in there somewhere that started to say, well, you know, I've got my job, but then there's also got the demand or this other opportunity out here that's gone from just oh, I'll do this in the evening on a you know a couple nights a week or a weekend pop up or an event or something like that. To now, like the demand probably started to kind of balance out, and you had to probably start to reach a breaking point. Um, yes. Talk about that. What was that like? So I continued to do that. And, and it basically ended up being where I was working two full-time jobs. I was working my traditional job in medicine and then running the med spa. Um, and I was so busy. And at, at um, one point I hired a, two estheticians to come in to help with additional services. So I was growing the med spa and the services that we offered. And I was constantly learning. But in my mind, I was still thinking that this was like playtime. And because I, you know, worked in my traditional medicine role. And so this just felt like fun, you know? And so at one point it just became overwhelming to do both for as many hours as I was doing. So. Gotcha. So. Um, yeah. So you've got this, you've got this idea of, all right, I actually started growing to the point where it's like, yes, I, we actually started having other team members uh, become a part of my side job, which is kind of funny, uh, you know, to say uh, side job, not so much a side job anymore. Um, with that in mind, then there, obviously, we know we reached the, the point where it was like, all right, it's time to just do this and dive into this end of the pool. And I think here's something that I think is very, you know, in very relatable uh, is many, many, and many a person that's listening in or, you know, is listening in and maybe they're in the same kind of place that you are as we talk about this or just this journey in general uh, is very relatable. 
what did that look like for you personally to have to make that jump? I mean, was that an easy jump for you or is that a difficult jump? What was what was easy? What was so, hard? And and what was that like? So it was the hardest thing I ever did mentally to make the jump to go all in with the meds, Bob, because um, I had to. Not only was I giving up a guaranteed salary, uh, benefits and health care and your paid time off and things like that, you know, you think you're going to just hang a sign and be like, hey, I know how to inject Botox and filler, like, come see me. And it's not like that at all. Um, people very much need to know you and trust you and have that um, provider relationship before they trust you with those things. Um, and so being sure that I had enough of sort of a basis and um, the confidence of the people I was working with um, and also having a plan, you know, to make that jump. I was trained in medicine. I don't know financials and I don't know, um, you know, leadership even, you know, like I know how to work as a team member and as a physician assistant, it's kind of like bred into us that, you know, things that are outside of your scope of practice, you go to your supervising physician and, and you have to know how to delegate to, you know, the medical staff below you. And so you're always, always a middleman, a middle person. And to then have to jump into this leadership role, I felt very unprepared for and not trained for and very nervous about. Right. So, you know, I had oh. to, yeah, let's, I mean, let's talk about that because so what I, you know, again, what I love is, as you just shared this idea that, hey, listen, number one, we had to make the jump from, and this is so relatable uh, to, uh, to, I think everyone listening is I had to leave something that I knew. I had to make a change in something that I knew to something that I did not know. While I was excited about it, while I I was excited about the opportunities at the same time, it's like I also had my security over here uh, and and excitement on the other side of it. But there's this whole big, is this going to work kind of thing or what's this going to look like? So we you kind of make that break in time. OK, I got to I got to make this happen. Talk to me about like what was the biggest hurdle with that, and how did you get yourself planning for that that move from leaving uh, my set job, this full time job that I have that offers me that rock, that kind of that security to the business, and then talk to me maybe even about the first like roughly I'll just say first six months because you were just kind of alluding to it is. I opened this business while I knew my skills, I knew my craft, you know, uh, in your area, I knew the, the work that I did in the first six months, what were some of the biggest challenges for you as a leader now with people now turning to you rather than as you just were kind of sharing, I'm so used to just going, I knew how to be a team member and go here, but now all of a sudden all the eyes are looking my direction and I'm looking going, all right, I guess I need to give some of this. Like, talk to me about that and maybe some of the the wins and some of the great things about it. And at the same time, what were some of the, the challenges with it? So I desperately was seeking um, professional vice. I know when I know something and I know when I don't know something and I try to surround myself with people and with a team that are going to help me, um, in the areas that I'm lacking. And so I was listening to a podcast and another med spa had mentioned that they were doing coaching with strategies and I had never heard of strategies and they mentioned a specific coach and I immediately went on and emailed and said, I need this coach. I didn't know what he was doing for them, but if it was helping them, it had to help me. Um, and so Dennis got a hold of me and we did our intro call. And um, from there, my mind was blown because all of the things that I had been seeking to learn about the financials and writing like the yearly budget. I mean, they would come to us in medicine with the budget, but you're like, okay, well, who the heck made that? <laughs> Where did that come from? You know, right. um, it was like magic. And now all of a sudden he's like, all right, you know, do this incubator course and write it. I'm like, oh, but you do it. And 
And then my mind was blown. And then, you know, you can continue to tweak it. So it was sort of learning those skills. Um, and also, I mean, at the time I was uh, a single mom. And so I was worried about um, insurance. And so I had somebody who was so helpful with insurance that helped me with those things. So I sort of surrounded myself with people that um, guided me in the areas that I was lacking knowledge and confidence to make that change. And I decided that um, I started coaching in 2021 and made the plan that by 2023, I was going to leave my full-time job. And um, you know, I was just going to keep doing what I was doing and it was burning the candle at both ends. Um, but I figured, okay, I can do this for a little bit longer until I'm really ready. And in 2021, my mom was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer mm. and she was diagnosed and 26 days later, she was gone. Wow. And wow. it was, it was awful. But at the same time, she kept saying, you have to just do this, Alicia. Life is short. This is what you're meant to do. Like, you're ready. And, and she kept saying, and Dennis said, you're ready. You just need. But, but I was mentally not ready for some reason, having that cushion of a, an extra year, even though I didn't need it. Um, it just kind of pushed it further away. Like, I have time. I have time. And um losing that time was um, a big wake up call for me. And it pushed me like, this is what I'd love to do. When I go there, it's not work. It's fun. My patients come there because they want to see me and I want to do it. And I went to Dennis and I said, can I do it sooner? And he said, yes, you should have did it a year ago. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and so he's, so before my mom passed, I put in my notice that I was leaving in 2022 at the beginning of the year. And so instead of waiting until 2023, I went all in, in 2022. Um, and it was the scariest, hardest thing, but I had a support team and, <clears throat> and I had the passion and the drive and I had already, nothing is harder than working too full-time jobs, like, you know, and being a single mom and running a house, you know, like I was really burnt. And now all of a sudden I'm like, wow, the weight of the world's off my shoulders, you know? And, and I had so much more time to learn the things that I didn't know the leadership things and, and the, um, the financials and, and just so many things about business that I felt like I didn't know I now had plenty of time to learn them um and so that's what made me sort of take the jump even faster than mentally I think I was prepared to but I sort of just said let's do it I I, I need to do it you know yeah I mean I you know what's really hits me is you know watching you and like I said the emotion and talking about your mother and you know, here's the, the question that, that really comes to my mind right now is, you know, you talked about how I really kind of held myself back with making that jump uh, and my, my own kind of self, my own fears and maybe self-doubts or questions kind of held me back. You know, mentally, I was more held back than anything. But, you know, it's it's amazing, Alexa, when you're talking then about your mom, uh, and what an inspiration it sounds like that that she was. But again, her just saying, you got to do this. How do you do you take jumps now faster? Do you like, listen, I'm not going to waste because you made that reference that like, I'm not going to waste that time. I'm going to honor in a sense, in a way, here's what I'm getting almost out of that is like, I'm going to honor this just idea of I'm not going to wait around because I see that time is a limited is a limited thing. And we need to honor the times that we have, uh, especially like says you're referencing, you know, loved ones and things of that nature. But as that translates now to just business in your life in general, do you find yourself with a whole lot less holding back and a whole lot more? No, we're listen, you know, we're going to make choices and make decisions. We're going to move Absolutely. forward, not recklessly, but we're going to move forward. And I'm not going to, I regret 
spinning my wheels for the time I did when yes. I should have just acted on those. Is Does that stay with Absolutely. you now? Absolutely. So, I mean, and I realized when I made and took the step, that taking the step was the scary part. Once you take the step, you fall into pace, right? You either sink or swim. And so now I realize that it's always, you know, you plan for it, you prepare for it. Are you ever truly mentally ready for it? No. And so now I know, like, if you've done your homework and your research and you've made a plan, they're not, it's not always going to work out. It's not always going to be like this huge success. And that's okay too, you know, but I definitely feel like um, I don't let my, my fears and my mental block hold me back. I definitely take steps faster because I do realize that time is limited and, and, and waiting is really just dragging your feet. You're not actually benefiting yourself all the time. Right. By, by waiting. Yeah. I love that's so awesome. I heard a speaker recently, and this is almost kind of ties in. Uh, he, he he shared his story and he talked about how many times he failed. But in a way, he he went on to say, I failed forward faster and farther than I would have would have ever done. It wouldn't than I would have ever dreamed of had I not attempted some of these things. And it's almost that same kind of idea. Not that there's this failure I you know necessarily linked to it, but it's like, hey, listen, sometimes things don't go as planned, but you know what? The fact that we keep pushing to do things, we keep advancing ourselves rather than just sitting in that one spot going, well, until it's perfect or waiting for the right opportunity that quote right opportunity to come along. So I right. think that's really awesome. It doesn't knock on the door for you. You have to, you have to kick the door down, you Love know? That. So yes. it, it's, um, it's been a true learning experience, but the joy that has come every day, like I say, um, I say my sister is a nurse and, and she was a nurse in deck, or I'm sorry, she was a hospice nurse. And Dennis said, you know, my coach said, you need to think about bringing on another injector. And I just happened to be on the phone. We talk every day driving to work. And every day I would be driving to the med spot. I'd say, guess what? I don't have a job anymore because I no longer felt like I had a job. Like I quit my job and now I just work at the med spa for fun. Like it, that's how it mentally in my head, it felt very exciting and, and awesome. And, and I said, Dennis said, you know, I should think about bringing somebody else on. And she said, that's funny. Cause I quit my job today. And so the same day, it was the same day. And I said, oh my God, like that is a sign from our mother that like, yep. <laughs> let's do this. And and I said, do you want to do this? And she said, I don't know, but I want to try. And so that was a year and a half ago. And she started out with just, you know, two half shifts a week. So eight hours, she's now four days a week in my med spa. And we laugh all the time because, you know, she well, we joke all the time. You have to ask Dennis first, you know, can I stay oh. extra? You have to ask Dennis first. Um, but it, it's, it was like, it was just meant to be a few hours. And in, in less than a year, she's there now, you know, full time. And same thing. We just both took the step and decided to see if it would work and we love it. And it's going phenomenal. That's so cool. It's, Again, you got to keep opening doors. You got to keep walking through doors. Sometimes you got to keep kicking doors down. Right. But again, you never know where that's going to lead you because had you not continued to do that, like I said, that moment of like, well, that's funny because I just quit my job today. Well, that's funny because I need would have never come to that. You would have never met at that intersection. Exactly. So that is so awesome. And so, I, I do, I do feel that like that positive energy every day you know, of like, keep, keep doing it, keep moving. Yep. I love that. What is, so let's kind of fast forward to kind of, all right. So where are we, give us a sense of where we are like right now. Um, so, Hey, listen, when we're doing this, uh, we are, uh, just entering just about to be November 1st. Uh, you know, at the end of 2023, as we're talking right now. So talk to me about where we are as a business right now when it comes to uh, what our location looks like and, and what the business currently looks like at this moment. 
So we we transitioned from me carrying a, a wheelie suitcase and a box of supplies and a microdermabrasion machine that weighs about 200 pounds by myself to um, to a location, um, which we were originally in Langhorne, but it looked like it was from 1990 and they didn't want to update it. Um, and then 2022, my husband and I opened a new location. We redid everything floor to ceiling. We picked the floors, the cabinets, everything. My med spa is mostly all pink because that's what I love. Um, and it's beautiful and welcoming. And we were doing, you know, a decent business in the beginning. You know, we were keeping our head above water. And end of November, or I'm sorry, beginning of November, 2023, um, we have done $1.2 million in revenue so far this year. Nice. Um, and we're constantly growing and, and building and, and adding to the team. Awesome. And how big is your team right now? Right now there's nine. Okay. There's, um, three providers, um, three estheticians and two guest care um, specialists. Awesome. That is fantastic. And we, we are only mobile because now we drive back and forth to work to a location. So That's actually, our mobile. Or you still got the I've mobile never, aspect. I've never completely given up mobile events. Mobile awesome. has always been something fun. And that truly is like a girl's night out. Although it's girls and guys now too. Um, and it's an awesome way that I connect with other businesses in the community. So we'll do like a blowouts, Botox and bubbly night and people will go to their hair salon and, you know, get a blowout. We'll do some Botox and, you know, so I do still do mobile events, um, and love them, but we just schedule ahead of time and, and adjust my in office hours as needed. But yeah, very cool. Still, I love it. Still, again, still doing things that you enjoy doing and still passionate about from that. And when you could easily say, you know what, um, you know, I've got this, come and see me here, but we're still keeping, you know, in touch with that root kind of idea because I'm sure more than anything, because it's like, I still enjoy doing that. And, you know? and, and my, and honestly, one of my goals for 2024 is to expand our mobile team. Very cool. To have a team of people that just do that, um, you know, do events in in their specific local area, um, but trained by myself and my team. And um, yeah, so 2024, I want to be more mobile again. I uh, love it. So you mentioned uh, Dennis, uh, your coach. He's uh, uh, quite a few times uh, through this conversation. Um, and you know, something that, and for those not familiar with Dennis, uh, he is like said, one of our fantastic, uh, educators and, and coaches here at strategies. Um, you know, and he, he gave one of probably the, I said, one of probably the greatest compliments I have heard, um, in all the years I've known Dennis and I've known Dennis now, I didn't even know if I want to even say, we might even be able to start to use the, the framework of 20 years. I hate to say it like that. I'm going to say 18 makes me sound like a little bit younger, I guess, for some reason, so much but known Dennis for a lot of years. And he gave again, probably one of the greatest compliments, uh, when we were talking about you and your business in particular, and he just shared the fact he goes, probably one of if not the uh the the easiest people I've ever coached uh because of your willingness to be coached and just your 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 attitude toward that and so I, my question for you is how does it feel to hear something like that someone that says like you know wow like I'm really maybe one of the 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 best people you've ever coached, the most coachable person that that uh, that he he's worked with. How's that? What's that mean to you? So I feel that um, I was very coachable because I was desperately seeking coaching. Um, when I 
was first joining with strategies and linked up with Dennis, there were things that I was seeking out, like reading books and asking professionals. And nobody was translating the, the language into something that I understood. Um, it, it was like, they were all explaining it to me in Greek and I don't know Greek and they thought that I should know Greek. It was, it was very bizarre. And then all of a sudden he's like, Oh no, this is what it means. And, and, and he translated it so perfectly and it is exactly what I was looking for. Like I said, I was desperately seeking the the guidance and the understanding. And so any kind of information he gave me, I would follow up with it. Any homework, you know, he'd be like, you're always doing your homework, but homework I know how to do. And it was making things clearer in my mind to bring my dream to fruition. You know, like this is going to help me to get like, what's the point of doing all of this if I'm not listening to the advice of people who actually know what they're talking about? If I ask Dennis how to reconstitute neuromodulators, he's probably not going to know, right? I'm speaking a different language. I needed somebody to translate the the leadership parts and and the teamwork parts and the financial parts and the planning parts into a language that made sense in my brain. And and so him to say I was very coachable is because I was I was seeking that information. I, I you know, I wanted it and and when it was given to me, I genuinely was grateful for it. So it was an amazing compliment, but it's to me, it's just a compliment that somebody sort of answered what I was seeking for a while, you know, finally threw me the lifeline of like, here you go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. And, you know, I think some things really resonate with me, you know, in particular, because I always kind of like to recap you know, and from my end, what I loved about talking with you today, Alicia, is just this idea that what kind of stands out is, you know, don't be afraid to make the jump, you know, in the things that you're pursuing. And I think that's been a common theme throughout what you shared from the very beginning of, hey, listen, it'll been very easy for you, very easy to say, Hey, listen, I'm in a I'm in a great position as a PA and I'm doing this and I've got this real security here. And here's a career in front of me. There's an absolutely a career there in front of you that we could have said, listen, I'd be happy doing this and and can grow and do cool things. And and uh, but yet it was like, you know what? I have a desire and there there's something else. And like not being afraid, even though you talked about how you know sometimes the biggest hurdle was making that jump at times. But that ability just to, to pursue those challenges and to to seek out. And I think that really stands out to me. I think this is fantastic. So uh, I'm hoping it inspire people. I do have one last question for you. Sorry, my uh, dogs right are before we wrap crazy up. For just a second. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> my dogs are about to go crazy. No, this. that's all right. That's all right. Listen, it's all cool. One more question for you before uh, while we got the dogs at the very end. The last question is this. What do you think your mom would say right now? Good girl. Love it. Say good girl. I'm so proud of you. I feel my mom with me every day when positive things happen. And she would say, I, I knew you should have did this. And uh, I think she'd be so, so proud of me. And I do feel that genuinely. Love that. Love that. And with that, what a better, no better way to wrap up. So Alicia, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate you sharing from just a genuine open heart. And uh, thanks for sharing this with us. And we hope uh, for all those listening, you got something that you could take away that to inspire you, encourage you uh, in some way, shape or form as you walk your life's journey as well. With that in mind, we look forward to talking with you again in a future podcast. So, but for right now, have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Thanks Thanks for having me. Thanks again for listening to the Beauty Business Strategies podcast. If you like this episode, be sure to hit follow and please share the episode link with anyone who you think could benefit from today's content. To learn more about how strategies can help create more fun, profit, and growth potential for you, your company, and your team, we invite you to schedule a free 60-minute strategy session by clicking the direct link in the description of this episode. There, you'll also find links to our wide array of coaching, seminar, and learning opportunities, all of which can be found at strategies.com.